Hi there, Grade Eights, and today we are going to be talking about feeding relationships. Producers, consumers, and decomposers. Now, did you know that all the biotic components in an ecosystem need energy, just like us, to sustain them? So, they obtain this energy from food. Energy and nutrients flow between the organisms in an ecosystem. This interaction between the biotic and the um, abiotic components is referred to as feeding relationships in the ecosystem. Producers. Now, plants and some bacteria are called producers in an ecosystem. Plants are the only components of an ecosystem that are able to produce their own food. Producers make their own food by the process of photosynthesis. So we've already talked about that, guys. Producers are also called autotrophs. This means that they do not depend on other organisms for their food. Producers are at the beginning of every food chain. Now, there's one exception with uh, regard to plants, guys. Those are your carnivorous plants. And I'm really hoping that I can get a carnivorous plant for our classroom. So, check this space. I might get one for our classroom. The energy that flows in an ecosystem comes from the sun. Plants capture this energy and make it available to other organisms in the ecosystem. Consumers. Animals cannot photosynthesize their own food as they do not contain chlorophyll in their bodies. You know that, right? Also, we rely on plants to obtain our energy, either directly or indirectly. We obtain energy from the plants directly by the means of eating their fruits or the vegetables, like fruits like uh, apples or vegetables like potatoes, and indirectly through meat that we consume. For example, we eat beef, that's a cow, and the cow eats grass. So that means that the cow gets its energy from the grass, we get the energy then indirectly via the cow. The organisms that rely on plants and other animals as a source of energy are called consumers. Consumers are also termed heterotrophs. They rely on other organisms for their food. Consumers are grouped according to the type of food they eat. And we'll talk about that just now. Then we get decomposers. Now decomposers break down or decompose the remains of dead plants and animals, or in some cases both. And um, decomposers help return the nutrients to the soil by breaking them down into smaller little parts so that the plants can use them once again. They recycle important nutrients in the environment, just like this dung beetle. Decomposers may be microscopic, such as bacteria, or macroscopic, such as uh, earthworms, or dung beetles, or even chongololos, millipedes. Now, let's talk a little bit more about consumers. You get herbivores, like the elephants over here. A herbivore is any organism that feeds on plant material only. So, examples are giraffe, sheep, Elephants, goats, yeah. Then carnivores. Carnivore is any organism that feeds on meat only. Now, some carnivores actively hunt and kill other animals. And those are called predators. And then the animals that they hunt and kill are called their prey. Examples include a lion that actively hunts and kills a buffalo and some carnivores feed on the remains of other animals they are called scavengers examples of scavengers include hyenas or jackal or even vultures that feed on the remains after a predator has killed that animal consumers with regards to omnivores an omnivore is any organism that feeds on both plant and animal matter. For example, we humans, we are omnivores. Well, some of us. 
Some people like to only eat plants and they are known as, yes you guessed it, they are vegetarians. Yes, well done. Okay, and then other examples are chimpanzees, gorillas, pigs like warthogs. So they all eat plant and animal. Then we have our consumers, our detritivores and decomposers. They're also classed under omnivores because these animals rely on both plant and animals for their feeding. Detritivores feed on organic debris formed by decaying plants or an animals as well as fecal matter. That's just the dung from some animals. And then this contributes to the decomposition process and helps return nutrients to the soil. Examples include earthworms, millipedes, wood lice, fiddler crabs, oysters, crayfish, dung beetles, and prawns. Have you ever had a prawn? Now, just think about what prawns eat. And you might think about eating prawns as well. And now, insectivores. Insectivores are also consumers. These are a group of small mammals that eat mainly insects and other small invertebrates, such as earthworms. Some examples include your shrews, moles, hedgehogs, pangolins and artwork. Have you guys ever seen a pangolin? And did you know that they are on the endangered species list because of poaching? Unfortunately, people kill them for traditional uses in the Far East. Now guys, I have an activity for you. I'm going to show you a couple of slides. Then you must draw a table in your books that has herbivores, omnivores, carnivores, detritivores, and decomposers. Then I want you to match the following animal names and numbers with those different groups. Okay, let's start. First one is a leopard. Can you guess which one it is? The second one is a hippo. Now, don't let those big tusks or teeth fool you. Have a very good look at the molars. Then you have a warthog, a wood lice, and lastly, an elephant shrew. By now, you should have placed one of each of the different groups in the table. Alright guys, that's it for me for today. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, remember to give it a thumbs up and share this with your friends if they weren't in class. Have a fantastic day. I'll see you guys next time. Bye for now.